Hello everyone, uh, my name is Larry Harris. I am the Behavior Specialist here at Crawford Middle School. I'll be reading a chapter out of the book, See Folks, and the chapter I'll be reading is entitled, Amir. In India, we have many vast cities, just as in America. There too, you are one among millions. But there are at least, at least you know your neighbors. Here one cannot say that. The object in America is to avoid contact, to treat others as foes unless they're known to be friends. Here you have a million crabs living in a million crevices. When I saw the garden for the first time, so green among the dark brick buildings, I thought back to my parents' Persian rug. It showed climbing vines, rivers and waterfalls, grapes, flower beds, singing birds, everything a desert dweller might dream of. Those rugs were indeed portable gardens. In the summers in Delhi, so very hot, my sisters and I would lie upon it and try to press ourselves into its world. The garden's green was so soothing to the eye as the deep blue of the rug. I'm aware of the color. I managed a fabric store. But the garden's greatest benefit, I feel, was not relief to the eyes, but to make the eyes see our neighbors. I grew eggplants, onions, carrots, and cauliflower. When the eggplants appeared in August, they were a pale purple, a strange and eerie shade. When my wife would bring our little son, he was forever wanting to pick them. There was nothing else in the garden that with that color. Very many people came over and to ask about them and talk to me. I recognize a few from the neighborhood. Not one has spoken to me before and now how friendly they turned out to be. The eggplants gave them an excuse for breaking the rules and starting a conversation. How happy they seemed to have found this excuse to let their natural friendliness out. Those conversations tied us together. In the middle of the summer, someone dumped a load of tires on the garden at night as, it were, as if it were still filled with trash. One man's four rows of young corn were crushed. In an hour, we had all the tires by the curb. We were used to helping each other by then. A few weeks later, early in the evening, a woman screamed down the block from the garden. A man with a knife had taken her purse. Three men from the garden ran after him. I was surprised that I was one of them. Even more surprisingly, we caught him. Royce held the man by a, by a wall with his pitchfork until the police arrived. I asked the others. Not one of us had ever chased a criminal before, and most likely, we wouldn't have accepted it except near the garden. There you felt part of a community. I came to the United States in 1980. Cleveland is a city of immigrants. The Poles were especially well known here. I'd always heard that the Polish men were tough steel workers and that the women cooked lots of cabbage. But I'd never known, known one until the garden. She was an old woman whose space bordered mine. She had a seven block walk to the garden, the same route I took. We spoke quite often. We both planted carrots. When her hundreds of seedlings came up in a row, I was very surprised that she did not thin them, pulling out all but the healthy looking plants each few inches to give them room to grow. I asked her. She looked down at them and she knew she ought to do it. But that, this task reminded her too closely of the concentration camp where the prisoners were inspected each morning and divided into two lines, the healthy to live and the others to die. Her father was an orchestra violinist, had spoken out against the Germans, which had caused her family's arrest. When I heard her words, I realized 
how useless was all that I'd heard about the poems. How much richness it hid, like the worthless shell around an almond. I still do not know or care whether she cooks cabbage. The garden found that this out with Royce. He was a young, he was young and black. He looked rather dangerous. People watched him and seemed to be relieved when he left the garden. Then he began spending more time there. We found out that he had a stutter. Then that he had two sisters, that he liked the cats that roamed through the garden, and that he worked very well with his hands. Soon all the mothers were trying to feed him. How very strange it was to watch the people who would have crossed the street if they'd seen him coming a few weeks before, now giving him vegetables, more than he could eat. In return, he watered, he watered for people who were sick and fixed fences and made other repairs. He might weed your garden or use the bricks from the building that were, was torn down up the block to make you a brick path between your rows. He, he always pretended he hadn't done it. It, always, it was always a surprise. One felt honored to be chosen. He was trusted and liked and famous after his exploits with the pitchfork. He was not a black teenage boy. He was Royce. In September, he and a Mexican man collected many bricks from up the street and built a big barbecue. I was in the garden on Saturday when the Mexican family drove up in a truck with a dead pig in the back. They built a fire, put a heavy metal spit through the, through the pig and began to roast it. A bit later, their friends began arriving. One brought a guitar, another bought a violin. They filled a folding table with food. Perhaps it was one of their birthdays, or perhaps no reason was needed for the party. It was, a be it was beautiful weather, sunny but not hot. Fall was just beginning, and the garden was changing from green to brown. Those of us who had come to work felt the party spirit enter us. The smell of the roasting pig drifted out and called to everyone, gardeners or not. Soon the entire garden was filled. It was a harvest festival, like those in India, though no one had planned it to be. People bought food and drinks and drums. I went home to get my wife and son. Water billets from the garden were sliced open. The gardeners proudly showed off their, what they'd grown. We traded harvest as we often did. And we gave food away as we often did also. Even I, a businessman, trained to give away nothing, to always make a profit. The garden provided many excuses for breaking that particular rule. Many people spoke to me that day. Several asked where I was from. I wondered if they knew as little about Indians as I had known about the Poles. One old woman, Italian I believe, said she'd admired my eggplants for weeks and told me how happy she was to meet me. She praised them and told me how to cook them and asked all about my family. But something bothered me. Then I remembered, a year before she claimed that she, she'd received the wrong change in my store. I was called out to the register. She'd gotten quite angry and called me, despite her own accent, a dirty foreigner. Now that we were so friendly and each other, I dared to remind her of this. Her eyes became, became huge. She apologized over and over again. She kept saying, back then, I didn't know it was you. Thank you for listening to this chapter. You have a great day.